but um, almost all Kingdom we, Hearts games we, are set in the realm of light. In that was this reality. I don't remember. Every conceivable Maybe place I just didn't could exist think about it. Besides, on one relatively okay. flat plane, Shh. you may be separated from a location by land, sea, or sky. But if you travel for long enough, you can theoretically reach anywhere you wish to go. Though there are such a vast, near infinite amount of locations that to reach them all in one lifetime would be impossible. This is the realm of light, an everlasting oh. expanse of various locations. Hogwarts, that are for the most Swamp, of each other, Moe's Tavern. <laughs> However, there exists an equal and opposite to this realm, the realm of darkness. If the realm of light exists on one side of a theoretical enormous disc, then the realm of darkness is the other side. Uh, to travel between these realms yeah, is impossible through regular means. And between them exist more neutral sub-realms, such as the realm of in-between and the realm of sleep. In all previously released Kingdom... I am Madros, yes. The worlds of in-between and the world of sleep? In Hearts games, you traverse the realm of light visiting these various worlds. But to do so, you require a special vessel to protect you. This is because a calamity has befallen the Realm of Light long before all of these games even took place. Most of the Realm of Light has been swallowed by darkness, with barely any fragments of light remaining. These remaining fragments are the worlds we visit in each of the games, surrounded by barriers that keep the darkness at bay, and it is the fragments of these barriers that Sora uses to construct a vessel to travel to other worlds. Yeah, Angela, that's his So video. why am I explaining this? Well. Kingdom Hearts Union Cross is a prequel to all of these games, allegedly set before the Cataclysm that nearly doomed the realm. The world in between was in Birth by Sleep? World in between was in Birth by Sleep. Being... The lanes between... Oh, are the lanes between and the worlds between the same thing? So, like, Twilight Town, Twilight Town, Castle Oblivion, Land of Departure, where Mickey found Aqua and Ben. That, yeah, that's, like, the space, right? But there's worlds there? Like, Twilight Town is a world there? Doesn't matter. Realm of Light. At this time, the Realm of Light is still the massive land I described earlier. A great expanse of nearly infinitely many worlds. Too numerous to name or visit them all. These peaceful, light-filled worlds are watched over by one man known as the Master of Masters from his tower in a world called Daybreak Town. However, dark machinations seem to be brewing in the Realm of Light, and darkness is spreading within the worlds. Seemingly as a response to this new threat, regular people with a natural resistance to darkness are finding themselves granted with Keyblades, as if the worlds themselves are drafting people to defend them. The Master of Masters selects six apprentices and bequeaths them with a new name as well as their own unique Keyblades. The pupils assume that their selection is in service of saving the world from the impending darkness, but are surprised to learn that this is not the case. The Masters tell the apprentices that the world cannot be saved. Hang on, let me see if I can... if he has subtitles. Maybe this will help a little Inevitably, bit. Inevitably, there will be a great battle between every Keyblade wielder that will engulf the entire world in its grasp. Every wielder will perish, and there will be nothing left of the Realm of Light. But how does he know this? Well, here's the thing. The Master has the ability to see into the future. Using this knowledge, he has written a book of every event that will happen up to the Keyblade War, and distributes one copy of this book to five of his apprentices. These five will be known as the Foretellers, and become the leaders of five unions. As the chosen, ordinary citizens gain their new Keyblades, they align themselves with one of these five unions gonna turn off under subtitles. the instruction of their union leader. This is where our story like as too the many playable words character of Kingdom Hearts Key begins. But we have a few more things to cover first. So these new wielders are joining the different unions, and the Master of Masters reveals to his six apprentices that they have a secret role that the others are not to know about. First, a mysterious man known as Master Lushu. This young man will not get his own copy of the Book of Prophecies. He will instead take the Master of Masters' very own Keyblade and set off into the world, simply to watch everything that happens. Okay. This is because, and get this, the Master of Masters has implanted his own eye into the Keyblade and created some sort of temporal link with it, meaning wheresoever that Keyblade goes in its future, the Master of Masters can apparently look through it and see what is happening at that time from the present. The Master uses this foresight to write the Book of Prophecies, 
and therefore the fact that the book even exists mean that Lu Xu is destined to complete his role. So off Lu Xu sets, taking with him the Master's Keyblade and a mysterious black box, destined to pass that Keyblade down to his eventual successors, and them to theirs, and them to theirs, until eventually the Blade will find itself in the possession of Master Xehanort, and everything that happened up until that point will be known by the Master of Masters. Next to Ira, leader of the Unicornus Union. Ira is a studious young man. Hang on, hang on, hang on. So then does that mean that... Does that mean that the Master of Masters has seen, like, Terra, Inventus, and Aqua then? Hi, Von Daddy. Because if he can see everything that the Blade sees from the present, that means that he has seen Aqua, Ventus, and, and Terra. But he has not seen Sora at all yet. So as far as he knows, Sora doesn't exist. Like, the Master can't write about Sora yet. As far as we know. Because that Sora hasn't ever fought that Keyblade yet. Where I am in the story, anyways. Is he immortal? It's not that he's immortal, it's that his Keyblade is. So he implanted his eye into the Keyblade, and then where he's in now, where he's alive, he can look at wherever that key is in time and see it? Hmm over his copy of the Book of Prophecies and very troubled by the final entry detailing the war. The Master presents Ira with his role. The Master will soon vanish and when he does it will be up to Ira to lead the other four foretellers in his stead. The Master insists here he can that see the where the Keyblade goes. Stopped, he can see where the Keyblade focus sees. on what comes after. Though the Master does hint that if Ira wants to he can try to prevent it. That, that's Ira. probably the biggest thing right there. If Ira wants to, he can prevent the war. The Master does say that, and Ira doesn't do it. He doesn't prevent the war. In fact, he pretty much starts it by saying there's a traitor among them. Master has said is given his role. Though he clearly has aspirations to be the foreteller <laughs> in charge himself, Ased is told that Ira will be the leader, and that he will be Ira's right-hand man. Although, should Ira fail to live up to the mantle, it will be up to a said to take the role from him. Master Envy of the Anguious Union is the next to receive her role. An interesting young woman, Envy is to watch over the other five with a fair eye and make sure everybody gets along. But she is also meant to speak her mind when she feels it's right. Master Ava of the Vulpers Union is given a crucial role. She must ensure that when the war does come, there are people left behind so the world is not entirely lost to darkness. That's the browser game she in that corner? She is to find Keyblade wielders with potential and form an entirely the separate organization. Then, when the war does come, they are to flee from the world, keeping the light alive. Among these chosen wielders, known as the Dandelions, Ava is to select five and make them the leaders of the new unions that will exist in this alternate world. Oh. The Master has written the names on a sheet of paper, and one of them will even receive their very own copy of the Book of Prophecies. Oh! The other new union leaders must not know about the book. It is to be a secret. And the young Master Gula, leader of the Leopardus Union, finally receives his role. He must take a secret page that was not included in any of the Foretellers books, concerning yeah, none the of them are, of a traitor are among that, that. He is to sin. use this secret page and observe his fellow Foretellers and see who deviates from their role. And from that, he can conclude who the traitor is. Gula cannot be sure that any of his comrades even his supposed best allies can be trusted. He can trust only himself. Finally... Okay, hang on. Like, a said, if anything, is Envy, right? Because he's envious that Ira is the leader. So I don't think their names actually correspond to whatever sin they're supposed to be. But, so... What was I going to say? Uh, most of this is the browser game. So there's... In the Dandelions, Ava has also selected five... Keyblade wielders. So they're just named after the sins, but they're not actually the sins. So she has named five Keyblade wielders to head a union after the war is done. Seems like a bad idea, but okay. The Master Cross little allies for every Keyblade wielder. These little spirits will be the constant companions and go-betweens of the wielders and the foretellers. They will hand out the missions and hold onto the lux gathered by the wielders. 
These Cherithes also act as a reflection of their wielder, and should their wielder fall to darkness, their linked Cherithy will become dark and turn into a nightmare. Though the foretellers and wielders may not know this, these Cherithes are Dream Eaters, the variety of companion slash enemy found in the sleeping realm we venture to in Dream Drop Distance. This should be a huge was red a flag huge, for any was viewers a, watching this, the things aren't as they seem. Was that a huge spoiler? With his six apprentices knowing and following their I mean, assigned I kind of roles, already assumed that, and but... new wielders joining the burgeoning unions every day, the Master of Masters, just like he said he would, disappears, and Lu Xu follows. Okay, with the introductions out of the way, it's time to introduce that. our Anyways, playable character the into the story. We begin having dived to our heart, as many Kingdom Hearts protagonists have before. We are asked to select one of the five unions before I being overwhelmed by night. darkness. All of a sudden, a Keyblade appears in our hand, what a Starlight Keyblade, which banishes the darkness, and we awake in a town called Daybreak Town. We meet our union leader, who introduces us to our own little personal companion, a being known as a Chirithi, who will give us daily missions from the union leader. We join a party of up to 30 wielders, and take down some small heartless before teaming up with our new party. I to wanted to do it to get the Keyblade. Boss. But then I saw how you In get this the Keyblade game, and I said, fuck that, attacks by summoning the power of characters from the distant future, channeled through cards bearing their image. Another power of the Book of Prophecies. We will go Hang into on. this a lot more at a... Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Channeled first. through cards bearing their image. Another power of the Book of Prophecies. We will go into this a lot more we... at a later point. Is that actually a story thing, or is that just a way to... As we to... discussed earlier, darkness is spreading throughout the realm Talk of Talk about light, a gameplay thing. And it will be up to us to defend the various worlds from this threat. This threat is actually the Heartless. Again, another red flag. How are the Heartless supposed to exist in the distant past? Chronologically, oh, I picked, the first time I picked we saw Ursa. Heartless in the Realm of Light was when Master Xehanort used them to draw out Ben's strength. Emblem Heartless weren't seen until Ansem's apprentices began artificially creating Heartless far after the events of Birth by Sleep. Anyway, we defeat Heartless throughout Daybreak Town, but apparently the Heartless have cropped up in different worlds as well. So we take up our Hang on. I missed that again. To to it's just a way to explain gameplay. Own. Okay, that's what I thought. This threat is actually the Heartless. Again, another red flag. How are the Heartless supposed to exist in the distant past? Chronologically, the first time we saw Heartless in the Realm of Light was when Master Xehanort used them to draw out Ben's strength. Emblem Heartless weren't seen right. until Ansem's apprentices began artificially creating Heartless far after the events of Birth by Sleep. Right. Anyway, we defeat Heartless throughout Daybreak Town. But apparently the Heartless have cropped up in different worlds as well. So we take up our Keyblade and use it to travel to lands far beyond our own. Yeah, I don't even know what These that means. These worlds are the various Disney worlds, such as Dwarf Woodlands, Wonderland, Agrabah, Olympus, and Beast Castle. In these then worlds, we meet the local residents and matter. assist them in their problems, which usually involves fighting some Heartless. In this game, as we defeat Heartless, we are able to obtain the light that the creature Von has Daddy's trapped too. within itself. The bigger or more dangerous the enemy, the more light, or lux, it has trapped, and each wielder will take the light back to their union. There is a competition between each union to see who can collect the most lux, with wielders being rewarded for collecting the most in the form of rewards. So which another forms gameplay a mechanic that they, they explain in the story. Rewards characters stronger, which makes them able to take down more dangerous enemies, which allows them to gather more light. I will be skipping the storylines of all the various Disney worlds here, as unfortunately the interactions between our wielder and these Disney characters has a little to no bearing on the larger plot. After several months of executing our missions in the various worlds, Chirithi offers us a reward, a bangle to make our cards even stronger. As we channel the borrowed powers of these people in the cards, this bangle will purify the sins of these characters and make our borrowed attacks significantly more powerful. We, and every other Keyblade wielder, take these items and equip them. However, all is not as it seems. The right, Chirithi you know that, that gave us this bangle was not our own. In fact, it was an imposter. It looks pretty normal right now, but for the sake of clarity, let's call it Dark Chirithi. Weeks pass by, and things are relatively normal. Our character even meets a group of Keyblade wielders, and nice forms a friendly rivalry with okay, them, but... agreeing to join them on a heartless hunt. Welcome to the stream, man. Our Chirithi and their Chirithi discuss the situation. We don't yet realize the imminent danger that befalls us. Von Daddy, In the thank you for chamber, your 1500 bits, addresses his fellow foretellers. Thank you, sir. He has discovered a Chirithi that appears know. darker than the usual ones, sniffing around uh, the town. Hot sounds good to me. He concludes that this is the Chirithi that was handing out the bangles to the players. And in fact, when wielders use these bangles, they are directly using the powers of darkness. Seeing as the bangles could not have been made by just anyone, Ira correctly guesses what Gula already knows. There is a traitor amongst the foretellers' midst. 
and the four tails react exactly as they were instructed to. A said, seeing a moment of weakness from Era, makes a power play, casting doubt in Era's leadership among the other four tellers. Envy tries to maintain the peace by calling a yeah, set just off, watched all of this. but insists there's no proof behind Era's claim. Gula is cautious, always watching for any signs of the traitor to reveal themselves. But and now we know that those out, are Gula follows. That those Bengals are bad. Said. Ava hopes the situation can be resolved before also making her leave. With Envy and Ira now alone, they speak less formally. Envy is worried, as making an accusation like this is very out of character for Ira, but there is still worse news to come. Ira has been pondering through the book again, as always, and realized that this revolution about the traitor is nowhere to be found within the Book of Prophecies. He surmises that the foreteller's copy of the book must have a missing page to explain this. Ira is remarkably perceptive here, calling both that there is a traitor and that there is a missing page. Potentially too perceptive? After we hunt down our heartless, we return to our new rivals. However, we find only their Chirithi, and it tells us that their wielder couldn't make it back. It seems that they have fallen in their fight against the darkness. Oh no. Our Chirithi refines to find the other wielder's Chirithi fading away. It seems that when their bonded wielder perishes, they too cease to exist. Our union leader watches as it fades away into nothingness, and remarks that as quickly as we are gathering light, it seems the darkness is spreading even faster. Our Chirithi asks if that is proof that there really is a traitor, but our union leader is not convinced just yet. One night, we dream of the foreteller's chamber in the clock tower, observing the master of masters address his five pupils, but are quickly surrounded by darkness and awoken before we can see too much. Our Chirithi reassures us and sends us back to bed, Outside the window, however, the dark Chirithi looks in, wondering why our Chirithi showed us that dream. Ours wants to do the exact opposite of the Dark One, making them enemies. A little while later, we are completing our latest mission to track down some strong Heartless. As we hunt... I'm a little confused by that. So our Chirithi is showing us specific dreams? Clock Tower. Observing the Master of Masters address his five pupils, but are quickly surrounded by darkness and awoken before we can see too much. Our Chirithi reassures us and sends us back to bed. Outside the window, however, the dark Chirithi looks in, wondering why our Chirithi showed us that dream. Ours wants to do the exact opposite of the Dark One, making them enemies. A little while later, we are completing our latest mission to track down some strong Hey, it's that kid! As we hunt, we run into a fellow wielder needing to rest after taking down a dark Ephemer. side. We help him to his feet and introduce ourselves. His name is Ephemer, and no matter which union we belong to, he will belong to a different one. He isn't working on the mission from his union leader today, though. He is trying to investigate the Look secrets at the of the little Mickey head in the... He has somehow discovered that the worlds we venture to aren't actually real at all, but instead are holograms conjured up by the Book of Prophecies, and he wants to know why. Ephemer's mentioning of the foretellers reminds... What? ...to a different one. He isn't working on the mission from his union leader today, though. He is trying to investigate the secrets of the worlds we visit. He has somehow discovered that the worlds we venture to aren't actually real at all, but instead are holograms conjured up by the Book of Prophecies. I'm gonna say this right fucking now. On record, if Kingdom Hearts, if it's revealed in 3 that Kingdom Hearts 1 or Kingdom Hearts 2 was simply a hologram, I am done with Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> Just gonna say that right now. Okay? Totally done. And he wants to know why. Ephemer's mentioning of the Foretellers reminds us of the dream we had the other night and we tell him that we saw the foretellers in a sanctum in our dream. The two of us are now keen to investigate and head off to the clock tower. Dark Chirithi appears to taunt our sure, Chirithi, we'll be, right? wondering if it will allow us I to I will literally not play Kingdom Hearts ever again. We search around the base I of the tower, when... but are unable to find a way in on the surface. However, exploring through the underground waterways leads us to a secret passageway into the tower. We are about to head in, but Ephemer stops us. 
He reasons that it took all this time for us to find the entrance today. If we stay and explore now, someone will surely notice that we are gone. We promise to meet at the fountain. You know what? Actually, I think... I think that them being holograms is just a way of reintroducing you to Disney characters that couldn't possibly exist yet. Right? So it's just it's just another gameplay thing of them being like, well, go to these worlds that you know from the main game. Oh, it's just a hologram. That's why they're allowed to, like, Snow White's not immortal. Like, okay, I think I get it. Okay. Until tomorrow at noon and begin our search properly. Around the time we were meeting Ephema, the foretellers were having a meeting of their own. Master Aset has invited Gula, Ava, and Envy to propose forming an alliance among their unions. Wait, whoa, to whoa, whoa. Together So, hang on. So, they were going... However, exploring through the underground waterways leads us to a secret passageway into the tower. We are about to head in, but Ephema stops us. He reasons that it took all this time for us to find the entrance Well today. done, friends. We stay Keep up now, the fight. So surely notice that we are gone. Thank you, Strike. We promised to meet at the fountain tomorrow at noon and begin ah. our search properly. So we were looking to get into the tower Around so the time we, we were meeting Ephema, the... Okay. The foretellers were having a meeting of their own. Master Aset has invited Gula, Ava, and Envy to propose forming an alliance among their unions, to pull together their light and withstand the growing darkness. He doesn't believe that any of the five are traitors, but seeing his era is too preoccupied with trying to find one, there will be no convincing him. Gula is on board, but as the Master forbade the forming of alliances, Ava finds herself unable to join. Envy walks in and is immediately suspicious of what is transpiring, throwing around accusations of Ased being a traitor. Ased fires back, accusing Envy of being tainted by darkness due to her spying and reporting back to Ira. Later that day at the fountain, Arva is musing about the events that have transpired when Ephema walks by, on his way home after exploring with us. He tries to cheer her up, and joking well done, to friends. to share some Keep of her thoughts Ephema once asked Arva, why the unions are forced to compete over the light instead of working together. And Arva admits that she has recently been asking herself the what same thing. What is this? I don't know. Ephema tells Arva that he met a friend today from another union, us, and that we are meeting again tomorrow. Arva seems very happy about this news, telling Ephema to go home and get some sleep. If the worst happens, she will be happy to leave the world in the hands of those that would work in harmony with others. Envy reports back to Ira, telling the leader of Ased's plot to form an alliance. Ira concludes that he must be the traitor, but Envy now doubts it. She sees that Ased is only gathering force as a means to oppose the darkness, despite it going against the Master's teachings. However, seeing as Ased is suspicious of the meetings between Envy and Ira, Envy says she will make them less frequent. Ira wants to talk Ased and Gula out of the Alliance himself, but Envy tells him she will do it. So Ira continues to sit up in the tower, alone, poring over the Book of Prophecies, as always. The foretellers yeah, were in a bad obsessed, state. Dude. Tensions are beginning to rise between them, and this suspicion of a traitor means that no one can truly trust each other. Because then biceps. The darkness is growing strength every day, and they are forbidden to join forces to do anything about it. The only option the foretellers have is to gather light to make them and their union stronger. And they are forcing themselves into a stalemate, because that is what all the other unions are doing. And they can't fall behind, because if there is a traitor, then that traitor will definitely keep going and gathering lux. And should the trader be the only one left gathering light and all the other non-traders stop, then the trader will control all the light, potentially being able to summon a Kingdom Hearts. Anyway, back to our character. That makes sense. We excitedly head to bed in anticipation for tomorrow's meeting with Ephema. However, that snake in the grass heads out in the dead of night without us, only to be stopped by someone, probably Master Ava. Ava was impressed with Ephema, and she invites him to lead the group of wielders that will escape this world into an alternate reality when the war begins. A reality very much like this one, However, oh. everyone that arrives here will be made to forget all about the strife between the foretellers. Ephema accepts, and is not physically seen again for a long time. The next day, we wait so at the Ephemer fountain for the Ephemer to the arrive, though he never lines. does. We are very upset, and Adshirithi attempts to comfort us. As we lift our little friend into the air, we get the initial reveal that this creature is emblazoned with the symbol of a spirit dream eater from Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance. And, as a reminder, these are benevolent creatures that protect sleeping people by consuming nightmares. As we sleep that night, Ephemer visits us in our dreams. He takes us back to the tower's secret entrance, but realizes that we aren't ready to follow him just yet, vanishing in a cloud of dandelions. We bolt awake and take this dream as a sign to look for Ephemer. We return to the waterways only to find Master Ava blocking our way. We tell her that we are trying to find Ephemer as we think he tried to contact us in a dream, 
Arthur hints that we are not too far off from the truth, and decides to test our strength. After one of the first, most challenging fights of the game, one of the best ways for directors to understand Hi, what actors need is to just go on. You'll be humbled. At the time, we passed her test. She is impressed by our strength, but sees sadness in her heart, hoping that we can find a way to let it go. She sends us home and asks that we respect that the tower is off limits. That night, as we sleep, Master Arva appears in our room. She realizes if Ephema can reach us in our dreams, then he must have found a way to communicate from the unchained realm he is in. Apparently we are getting close to that realm as well. We spend the next few months performing missions in the worlds we are familiar with. It is worth pointing out that all The Dandelions are from the Land of Departure. That's the Unchanged Realm. The Land of Departure is actually in the Unchanged Realm, which is how it becomes Castle Oblivion. It's just a theory. A game theory. All of the worlds we visit, except for Olympus Colosseum, is the homeworld of a Princess of Heart. We form a rivalry with another wielder who is kind of a jerk, but then turns out to be not so bad. But during this time, nothing of much interest happens to the player. A few months after forging the Alliance, Envy has convinced Gula to call it quits. Not only has nothing suspicious happened recently, but there has been no headway into finding the identity of the traitor, nor has Ased gained the support of the other three. Ased vows that Envy will pay for this. Envy, you will regret this. As a reward for all our hard work lately, our Chirithi gives us a bangle of light. This trinket offers us protection in the corridors of darkness, and we traverse these to take down a strong and exhausting dark side. When we return to Daybreak Town out of breath, our Chirithi acknowledges that this is tough work, but if we don't gather light, then the other unions will get ahead. A new character emerges from a similar portal and asks why that matters, as the goal to protect the light should be one that all unions share, not a competition. Her name is Skald, and she is the Skald? leader of a party that Ephemer once belonged to before oh. he disappeared. Ephema reached out to her in a dream and told her to find us and warn us. The world is about to end. The two young wielders decide to head back to the tower, the last place they saw Ephema, but as they are about to head off, they hear a large, booming sound. Master is said as challenged Envy, and the two oh, trade ferocious blows across Daybreak Town. Oh, it's much cooler in the video than it is in the game. Gula watches intently, and when he sees Master Arva arrive, he feigns that he too has only just arrived. Envy publicly accuses Ased of being the traitor, and Envy, Gula, and Arva raise their blades in unison against their comrade. But Ased is not done just yet. In this time, Skull- Hang on. What was the boss fight that we did in Birth by Sleep, where the dude created an X- with his keyblade that like came as a projectile at us wasn't that ventus Venetus as aqua Venetus Venetus ventus it was, a, it was them combined right not just Venetus. Venetus. it was them combined after the key the keyblade had been formed Interesting. I wonder if there's a link there. Venetus and Vent's heart. Venetus Ventus. And Ased did the same thing to Envy. He created the same X. Geld and our character have been rushing to the tower. As we sprint across town, we are ambushed by three grotesque creatures that cry out They are super cool lights. looking. We fend them off and give chase, but are interrupted by the Dark Cherithy. Now completely purple and with glowing red eyes, he looks Dark amazing. Shirithi taunts us and teases that if it took everyone's lux away, then there wouldn't be any need to fight over it anymore. Those darklings that we just fought used to be wielders, but they took absolutely any actions necessary to gain lux, and in their pursuit of power, became corrupted by darkness. Our Chirithi demands to know which wielder the Dark Chirithi is bonded to. Dark Chirithi only says that they are closer than we think and vanishes. Frazzled, we continue racing to the waterway. In the meantime, Daybreak Town has been completely rocked by the battle between the Foretellers. Gula looks completely fine though. He probably strategically avoided the fight as to observe the others. 
Gula finds a Sed, who is clearly exhausted and wounded from battle, and had taken refuge inside the house where he had held the earlier meeting. Gula arrogantly approaches the weakened Sed, and reveals that there is a lost page to the Book of Prophecies that he is in possession of, which instructs him to find and eliminate the traitor. As Sed's anger fuels into his feet, and Gula is quickly overwhelmed and knocked out, Ava rushes in and uses her body to shield the fallen wielder, prompting Ascent to show mercy and limp away. Ava decides to take Gula into hiding for his own protection. Injured and exhausted, Ascent slumps through the streets of Daybreak Town, nearly collapsing as Ira finds him. Believing that Ira has come to finish him off, Ascent only asks that he make it quick. But Ira has not come to fight. The world cannot afford to lose one of the five lights. Ira does not believe Ascent is the traitor, but Ascent is starting to think that Gula might be. He tells Ira about Gula's lost page, validating Ira's suspicion that such a page exists. Ira is determined to see that lost page. During this time, our player and Skald have fought their way through the passageways and arrived at the entrance to the tower. Stepping through, they finally find the foreteller's chamber, though it is completely empty. Chirithi urges them to leave, but it's too late. Someone has found them. It is the leader of the player's union, in my case, Master Gula. The leaders claim that they caught Ephemer sneaking around here, and that even though Ephemer pretended to be our friend, he was only doing so to steal our lux. So our leader killed him. Our Chirithi tries to take the blame for our intrusion, and tries to get us out of there, but we step forward. And after being silent nearly the whole game so far, we speak. We have served the Foretellers unquestioningly up to this point, defeating countless Heartless and working so hard for our union. But for the first time when we met Ephemer, we found that we had made a true friend. But our leader took him away from us. We are hurt, we are sad, we are angry. We don't even care if that means we have fallen to darkness, but we will not just accept his death. Our leader took our friend from us, and now they will face our wrath. We are going to fight our own leader. We throw everything we have into this battle and seem to really do some damage. However, none of this was as it seemed. We were not fighting our leader. We were not even in the foreteller's chamber. This was all a test set up by Master Arva to test curious wielders to see if they have what it takes to join the dandelions and we passed. Ephemer is actually fine, waiting in the alternate reality to our own, and when the war dawns, we have the opportunity to join him. Skald accepts, but we request some time to think about it. After all, we would not feel right simply abandoning all the others who will not be chosen. But we do not have long to think about it. Ephemer sent his warning that the war is nearly here, and seeing as the foretellers are clashing publicly now, he is probably right. Master Arva has been hiding the injured Gula from Ased and Ira. Envy doesn't trust Arva, and betrays her by telling Ira where Gula is hiding. Ira is on his way to Gula right now, but Ava steps up and blocks his path, and the guy just backs down. Ava returns to Gula, and Gula spills the beans about the lost page. The lost page apparently says that there will be an inevitable betrayal by the one who bears the sigil. But which sigil? The Recusant sigil? The sigil that became incorporated into the names of Organization 13? Another of the many sigils that have appeared in this series? Gula does not know who the traitor is, but suspected a said, which is why Gula finally decided to confront him. However, he has failed, and is no closer to finding out who the traitor is. Out of desperation, Gula plans to force the Master of Masters to return to set everything right, and the only way he can do this is by summoning Kingdom Hearts. If his union gathers enough light, he can pull this impossible feat off, and then the Master will have to return. He wants Arva to help, but summoning Kingdom Hearts was strictly forbidden by the Master, and Arva refuses to go against his teachings. Gula understands, and limps away. Ava tells Envy about Gula's scheme. Envy yeah, now realizes why Ira there, and Sed have been so frantic about gathering Lux themselves. The only way they can be sure the traitor doesn't summon Kingdom Hearts is to gather enough Lux themselves and maintain the balance of light between the Next units. Next time, Envy and Ava now realize that they anything, also have no choice but to gather Lux at the same frantic pace. If I don't say anything, don't say anything. Even if delays the inevitable. The once friendly competition But if you act like I missed something, I'm going to start thinking about it. Bitter and jealous struggle between Everyone limps away, I noticed. With some wielders allegedly stealing Lux from other unions. The Keyblade War draws closer by the day. Ava begins training the Dandelions, saying that they will be headed to a world that looks just like their own, only it is made of dreams. See, they will need to use the skill one. of entering the dream world when the war does arrive, so that even though the world is Ephemer's lost, not, they will survive. May your hearts be your guiding key. Our character walks through Daybreak Town one day to see two wielders at each other's throats, accusations of theft and treachery, before eventually a fight breaks out, which we rush to break up. Skald pleads with the combatants. Keyblades are meant for the heartless, not for each other. But the fighters callously remark that any thief of Lux deserves to have a keyblade used against them. Master Ased agrees. He feels that in the Great War, 
the union with the strongest wielders will prevail, not the one that gathers the most light. And Master Ava obviously feels the same way. After all, she is cherry-picking wielders from every union, weakening the others while strengthening her own. He has misinterpreted Ava carrying out her role as her preparing for war, and he intends to do the same. A said belittles Scarlet for her affiliation with the Dandelions, but we step up in response, as we do not yet belong to them. Master has said wants to make an example of us, and asks us to raise our blade. After making a mockery of us and claiming we fail as a Keyblade wielder, Ira appears and calls him off, bewildered that Ased would raise his blade against a pupil. Ased claims to have only tested our strength, as he wants to recruit strong wielders as well. While the other four become so preoccupied with gathering Lux, he will raise the strongest army and through strength banish the other four leaders and unite all wielders under his own union. Ira warns Ased not to overestimate himself. Ased may be strong, but he's not that strong. As Ased and the other onlookers depart, Skald asks Ira, why battle. is he agreeing to the final battle? After all, if they know there will be no winner, then why march towards their death? Ira simply answers, if all five do not fight, then someone will win. And that victor will summon Kingdom Hearts, which will have untold consequences upon the world. The faded battle is now mere days away. We pass out from exhaustion, and Skald and Chirithi take us home. Oh my god. We dream of the faded land, a great battlefield so littered with the keyblades of fallen wielders, and we are watched by many people covered in shadows. Skald and Chirithi discuss as we sleep. There have been many fights like the one we saw happening today all over Daybreak Town. The masters have completely fallen apart. Their personalities have totally changed. Skald has been trying to convince more wielders to join the Dandelions and save themselves from the final battle. Unfortunately, in the last couple of this is chicken. Oh McNuggets. fuck Boston yeah! I want some chicken nuggets, dude. McDonald's chicken McNuggets. Damn. Damn. Tender, juicy, all white meat, and now a six piece is just two dollars. Two dollars. One, two, three dollars. Two dollars for a six piece. Days, Master Ava has disappeared, and without their recruiter's presence, some dandelions are actually going back to fight for their unions in the war. Chirithi thinks Master Gula might know where Ava is. After all, the two of them are good friends. We decide that tomorrow we will search for Master Gula. Hopefully he can at least tell us where Ava is. I think now would be the best time to introduce you to the character Streletzia. This fellow wielder started her journey around the same time we did, two years oh, she looks before awesome. the war. She, like all the other thousands of wielders, followed the orders of their leaders, carrying out her missions and collecting Lux in various worlds. She never really had any friends to talk to, but one day she learned of us. She observed us by the fountain on the day we were supposed to see Ephema. At the end of the day, she returned to find us still there, hugging our Chirithi with tears in her eyes, and from that day onward, she seemed to notice us everywhere. She always wanted to work up the courage to talk to us, but could never quite muster it. Streletzia also became a dandelion, and one day, she received a visit from Master Ava. Ava had selected her to lead one of the five new unions in so the that's new world. Three. In her bed that night, Streletzia can hardly believe that this is real. She or reads two? through a special green notebook, learning of her new role and responsibilities in the new world, but she is very worried for all those who will be left behind. Suddenly she realizes, we are not a dandelion. We will be left and forced to fight. She wants to run out and find us now to convince us to join the dandelions, but as it is too late at night, she resolves to wait until the morning and wait for us at the fountain, where we can often be found. The next morning, our character and Skald are able to find Gula within an empty house in the district of Daybreak Town. Perhaps he is still wounded from his battle with the said and in hiding from Ira. Gula asks if we are part of Arvis dandelions, searching for our missing master. If we find her, will we implore her to do something about the inevitable crisis? Unfortunately, not even Arva can stop what is fated to happen now, but there is someone who could. Gula still hopes that if the Master of Masters were to return, perhaps he could set things right. But even though Gula and Arva have searched relentlessly, they have found no trace of him. But there might be someone who does know where he went. The sixth apprentice, Lushu. That is where Arva has been, searching for Lushu. And it is at this moment that she finally found him dutifully performing his role on a hilltop overlooking Daybreak Town, and as always, watching. Lushu tells Arva that he was not given a book of prophecies. Instead, his mission is to survive to the time that the book describes. He will witness the Keyblade War, and then set off toward the unknown future, with Keyblade in hand. He speaks vaguely about the Lost Page, about the future that has already been foretold, but that the foretellers do not know about, and about the Master of Masters' true intentions. Arva asks if all of this, the breakdown of the Five, the fights over Lux, the Great War, and even the end of the world were all what the Master wanted to happen. Lushu says that the Master does not care about the fate of the world, only what comes after. Lushu seems to have knowledge of the Lost Page, and everything he does is in accordance with it, which is strange because as far as we know, Gula is the only one with a copy, and he can't seem to make any sense of it. 
Ava flat out asks. Lushu, have you been behind all of this? Are you the traitor? Lushu does not respond with words, but does summon his keyboard. Back in the abandoned house, Gula reads from the lost page. And though I am extremely grateful to have these unofficial translations provided by Kingdom Hearts Insider or Everglow, I would love nothing more than to see these scenes in their official translated form. Master Gula reads. Unable to permit disharmony, you will be disappointed by fate and lose sight of true strength. Misreading the truth, you will venture forth in secrecy. Back to the hill. Gula has also told Ava something from the lost page. Whether he told her the same text that Gula just told us, who can say? I get the feeling that he told us something else though, as Ava seemingly cannot believe her ears, unable to accept that this is not only the truth, but also how the master planned it. Lushu claims that this is the truth about the traitor. Whatever Is Ava the traitor? Like creating the dandelions, being told to create the dandelions is tr is being the traitor? Lushu told her seems to have cemented within Ava's mind that this battle is 100% unavoidable. In her disbelief, Ava assumes that Lushu must simply be twisting the master's wishes for his own goals, drawing her keyblade. Skald is having a hard time processing the passage as well, when Gula reveals to her that there is more. And then, with one final strike, a bell will toll for the final battle, and the battle shall begin at last, and the time shall be chosen. Shiruthi thinks that there is no way Gula should be telling them something this important, and Gula agrees. However, as the battle is now so close and utterly unavoidable, he hardly thinks it matters. At that moment, Ava lashes out at Lushu, their keyblades colliding and sending a ripple throughout all of Daybreak Town, ringing the large bell atop the clock tower and letting everybody know, the war has truly begun. The wielders will now assemble amongst their unions, ready to head to that fated place. Outside of the house, Skald and the player talk. We have still not made up our mind to join the Dandelions, but Skald does not want us to fight. She will return to the Dandelions, hoping that we make the right choice. Wait, what about stress? We talked to our Chirithi. If we die, so will our little friend, but it isn't worried about itself. It is truly worried about us, and it does not want us to fight. It seems like we are about to finally make the decision to join the Dandelions, when we are interrupted by a voice, taunting us for running away from the battle and abandoning those who will stay behind. It is none other than the Purple Nightmare, Dark Chirithi. It confirms to the player that it was the one who handed out the bangles on behalf of the Master of Masters, making all the wielders capture and use the power of darkness without even realizing it. And to top it all off, Dark Chirithi claims to be ours. We are its wielder, and the darkness it's feeding off is ours. It has not been following us around like our spirit Chirithi. It has been off following its own plans, stealing Lux and corrupting other wielders into the grotesque darklings that we saw before. Speaking of which, three darklings attack us, and Chirithi finishes by saying that if we won't join the final battle, then it will show us a dream. Ad Chirithi wants to know what the point of attacking its own player is, but Dark Chirithi says that as a nightmare, it has the power to show bad dreams. It can sever the bonds between player and dream eater, and live free. We defeat the Darklings, but Dark Chirithi hops down and absorbs them into itself, forming a large boss monster emblazoned with a nightmare symbol. Defeating this large abomination of a creature as well, Dark Chirithi seems almost happy and says that now that we have severed the bond, it can roam and be free. It looks forward to seeing us in another dream. Streletsia's Chirithi runs up to her and says that it has spotted us, presumably when we were outside of the house, talking with Skald, and she takes off at full speed. Oh, she enters the building that we just came out of and walks inside the dark room. It appears to be empty though, and she turns around to leave. Suddenly, from the shadows, a figure appears and strikes, fatally wounding the young wielder and taking her rule book. In her last moments, Streletsia wishes that she'd have had the courage to talk to us and doesn't quite make it outside before her heart floats up into the sky and her body vanishes. Aww. The war That's really has sad. Begun. The five unions and their leaders assemble, charging forward into battle. In a surprisingly uh. moving scene, Keyblade wielders take up arms against one another and the hearts of the I've victims begin to float up into the sky. Resolving to not give up just yet, we are approached by one of the union leaders. Our character will battle four Union leaders, all except their own, but That's I will show so the footage sad. from all five battles. First so is she didn't get a chance to challenging talk us to and us. praising us for not backing down. He finds us worthy this time, seeing us as a major threat and striking she us while we guard us down. The only thing saving us is the arrival of Ira, who locks blades with the said before the two of them fly off into the battlefield. She kind of looks Next like is nominee. Master Envy, who apologizes that we had to be a part of this war before again attacking. Perhaps her heart is simply not in this fight. 
For perhaps we really are that strong, but we are able to hold her off. That would absolutely exhaust us. Envy withdraws her keyblade, wishing us a long and happy life before walking away. Hearts fly right past us as we reach out in sorrow, but there is no time to mourn. Master Gula approaches. Despite our severely weakened state, and despite the fact that he just shared the secrets of the book with us, he attacks us as well. Again, we hold off the foreteller, who says that, should he actually have to put in effort to defeat us, he would rather not. He takes off into the sky, saying, perhaps we will meet again. We collapse on the ground, and keyblades rain from the sky. Master Ira approaches. After another grueling battle, Ira pauses to recognize our potential, noting how much of a waste it will be to lose a wielder like this in this pointless war. Lining up to finish us off, he is instead interrupted by a Sed, who looks to finish the battle once and for all. Claiming that he will rebuild this world as its new king, a Sed and Ira take off into the air to continue their clash. And should the player not be in the Vulpers Union, they will come across Ava as the final battle. We tell her that we looked everywhere for her, and hope that she can still end the fighting, but to our dismay, Master Ava raises her blade against us, telling us to raise ours. Whatever Lushu said to her, it clearly robbed Ava of the hopeful nature that she once held, and after the battle she walks away from us, hoping that we will get far, far away and join the Dandelions before it is too late. After the four battles, we collapse, dying. Achirithi hugs us, and it seems that at last the fighting has ceased. We may be the last surviving murderer of the war, among a graveyard of lifeless keys. All hope for us seems lost, but a beam of light rains down, and who should step through but Skull and Ephema? With tears welling up, we reach out to him, the boy who had broken his promise, but it made it back to us in the end. He reaches out his hand, and we slowly reach up and take it. Master Lushu, as always, watches from afar. The sky is a swirling black tundra, but from within that darkness the clouds part and the light of the one true Kingdom Hearts shines down onto the battlefield. The light held by all of the Keyblade wielders rises up into the air, absorbed by Kingdom Hearts, and right behind the light are the hearts Don't of all the wielders. Don't tell me, never mind. Lucia can see all of this, and of course, so can the Master of Masters through the eye embedded in his Keyblade. Despite this being the end of Kingdom Hearts Key, the mobile game Unchained Key continues the story. There is a credit sequence to Kingdom Hearts Key, and an epilogue, but we are not ready to learn about that just yet. After taking our dying character and placing us within the alternate reality where the Dandelions reside at the end of the war, Ephema does as he was instructed, and returns to the location of the battle, in the real world. This is where the five new Union leaders are to meet, and begin their reign over the Dandelions. This is after the, the war. The first to arrive is Ephema, but he is soon joined by Skald. Ephema is surprised to see that she is the second leader, but Skald isn't too surprised to see him. Soon after, number three arrives. It is none other than the playable character of Birth by Sleep, Ventus. He claims to have always been on his own, never ranked too highly, and doesn't have that- What? many friends. While the three converse, the fourth walks up, a male with an obscure face and hair that reminds me of Zexion's. He claims that his name is Brain. Okay. He assumed that he would be the last to arrive, and quickly asks if Ephema is the new leader. The four have really only just arrived, so nothing like that has been decided yet. So next Brain asks if the rules in the green rulebook are ironclad, or if there is some wiggle room. Skald says the rules are rules, and Brain finds that she reminds him of Master Ava, the second person to say this. Brain wonders if the new five can even trust Master Ava. After all, she expects them to just lie to everyone, pondering if it wouldn't just be easier for everyone to know the truth. Ephema remembers what Ava had once sent to him when he posed a similar question. Would telling everyone the horrors that he had personally witnessed actually make things any better, or would it make more sense to keep them in the dark for now? Now to wait for the final member of the new group. It seems like quite some time has passed, but finally number 5 arrives. It is a man with pink hair, addressing himself as Lorium. Fans of the series will instantly recognize this character as the complete somebody that lost his heart and became the nobody no way. Marisha, the primary antagonist of Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories. I'm sure you must have a million questions What the point, fuck? We're so close to the end. Let's keep going. What the fucker?
What? What? There's that. What? So Ventus is one of the leaders of the Union of Dandelions, and so is Marluxia before he becomes Marluxia? The minute they said he said pink hair, I was like, there's only like one character that has pink hair. Who is the fifth? Marluxia. I'm sure you have a million questions. I do! So where is our character right now? Well, as we said earlier, they have joined the Dandelions in an alternate version of the world they once knew. We, and all the other Dandelions that entered this alternate reality, had our memories erased as we arrived. Of we got we here, did. dove to our heart again, obtained our Keyblade again, met our Chirithi, Ephemer, and Skald again. We are reliving our entire journey so far, but the only difference is, this time, there will be no war. Some of you have undoubtedly realized by now, but if not, Kingdom Hearts Key is the original journey. Kingdom Hearts Unchained Key was not simply a remake. From a story perspective, our character has already gone through all the events leading up to the war and lived through it, and is now re-experiencing their journey in a dream world. Kingdom Hearts Unchained Key receives essentially the same story up until the point at which the Dandelions are being trained for their journey into the new world, and after that point, the stories diverge. So what is life like without the ongoing threat of a war? Well, we essentially keep on carrying out our ignorant, obedient life, collecting lux and completing missions. On one of our missions to defeat a large Heartless that tore up the Moogle shop, we meet four new allies and from that point onwards have many fun adventures with them. Hunting Heartless together through various worlds and even taking a summer and Halloween vacation with them. During our missions we gain access to two new worlds, the Castle of Dreams and the Enchanted Dominion, homeworld of Cinderella and Aurora respectively. The only missing princess at this point is Kairi. At the one year anniversary of Kingdom Hearts Unchained Key's official launch, the game was renamed and relaunched as Kingdom Hearts Union Cross, where Cross is a stand-in for the Key or Kai sigil that adorns all three of these games. One of the key features that accompanies this update was the ability to do missions with friends, a true cooperative but non-canon multiplayer mode, and I believe the missions with our new friends are the story equivalent of that. Though we can now do multiplayer missions with our friends in real life, and it is called Union Cross, the player is experiencing the same thing, completing their missions with four of their friends, their own version of Union Cross. I'll explain more about that in a little bit. So, Lushu is the only one... Lushu is the only one that has an X in his name. Out of all of the other wielders, all of the other foretellers. And if there was a sigil... And that's the thing that gets passed down to all of his apprentices. Xehanort. That's... Hmm. However, life is not perfect for our character. For one, we keep experiencing terrible nightmares of our past life. We remember the Keyblade War, our near death. We remember clashing with Master Asset in the streets. And we remember the end of the world. Our Chirithi watches us sleep, nope. and one night I'm not playing after the game experiencing Mayoko. another bout of this nightmares, This is the uh, asks, Union Full Story watch party. Chirithi responds, no longer than usual. I love this line, and maybe I'm reading too much into it, but to me it says that every single time we fall asleep, we re-experience I mean, a game, dream version right of our entire journey so far. Our Chirithi is secretly reporting our nightmares back to Skald and Ephemer. Skald is concerned about them, and Ephemer asks that Chirithi not forget its main task, to get us to participate in Union Cross. On a meta level, the multiplayer mode Union Cross is one of the only activities in the game that rewards you with the in-game currency used to power your character up. But from a story perspective, the reasoning behind this is, as Skald says, that having new adventures with friends is a great way to bury sad memories deep within one's heart. She is clearly referring to the memories of the tragedy that we witnessed. In the Kingdom Hearts series, the a person's war. heart is almost like a physical, tangible object that once imprinted on with an experience, whether negative or positive, that experience will always linger in the heart, even if we forget about it. Even though our memory has been wiped, that horrible imprint of witnessing all of our friends perish in the war is still a part of our heart, and indeed memories of the conflict are on all of the Dandelion's hearts. So by replacing those memories with new, happy ones, that sadness will be pushed down. Not erased, mind you, just buried, which seems like a bit of a band-aid on a much larger wound. Ephemer says that we cannot stand to lose anyone right now, that the darkness in this world is different 
that it seems to have a mind of its own. Ephema worries whenever something happens in this reality that didn't happen in the previous one. Ephema also seems to have his doubts about the whole Union Cross business, but Skald reassures him. It was in the rules, so it must be the right thing to do, right? In case anyone needs a reminder, the Master of Masters is the one who selected the five Union leaders and gave Arva the rulebook to give to them. Perhaps Ephema is right to be suspicious. Yeah, in any shit. case, now that the five foretellers Forgot have assembled, they can make their way to the foretellers' tower, which technically belongs to them now. Deciding for the moment not to split the dandelions into five unions again to avoid repeating history, the group also thinks that they shouldn't tell anyone that the foretellers are presumably dead to avoid any panic or confusion. It is worth noting that all of the members, except honestly Ven, seem familiar with the contents of their rulebook, like they have had enough time to read it. Just a reminder, but one of these people should not be here. Stroletzia was given a rulebook by Arva and was supposed to become a union leader. However, an assassin stole the book and killed her and now one of these five is in her place. During this entire conversation, Brain finds what appears to be a copy of the Book of Prophecies sitting on the Master's desk, and he has been- If the Master of Masters is the one that selected all of the names to hand out, then that means whoever killed Stravetsov is directly changing what the Book of Prophecy saw. Right? So then, is it a bad thing that somebody killed her and took her spot? In reading it. He takes a page from it, finding what appears to be the new group's first task. They are to create little spirits for each of the wielders, little dream eater pets that will help devour nightmares. Skald remembers that our character is suffering nightmares of our previous life, and is more than happy to do this if it will help the dandelions forget about the past. It Skald, is. Ephema, and Ventus. It's super sad, but it's also the only thing so far that throws a wrench into anything the Master of Masters had planned. Right? It's the only thing. Everything else is going exactly as he had planned, except for one person did something that he did not expect and has now taken the role and has definitely changed everything against Master of Master's choices. I don't think she would do that. I think we've seen from Ava that she wouldn't do that. Set off to go collect materials for the new pets. But Lorium does not want to go, claiming he does not enjoy that sort of work. But he is more than happy to stay in the tower helping Brain with the chemistry behind it. Curious. Perhaps Lorium cannot wield a Keyblade, and would therefore be outed as a fraud should the need to enter combat arise. And unfortunately, that is- Now is probably a good time to talk about the secret ending- What was that? With the chemistry behind it. Curious. We know Perhaps Marluxia Lorium can't cannot wield a Keyblade. wield a Keyblade, and would therefore be outed as a fraud should the need to enter combat arise. And unfortunately, that is- what is Unchained Zero? What is that? We'll probably watch the update video right after this. We know Marluxia can't use a Keyblade, so does that mean that Marluxia is the one that killed Sorcerers? Now is probably a good time to talk about the secret ending of Kingdom Hearts Key. It can be inferred that at one point during our adventures through the Enchanted Dominion, we dozed off and took one of our many sleeps. Dreaming yet again of our entire adventures so far, we wake up somewhat confused as to how we got there. Chirithi says that ever since the day that Arva asked us to join the Dandelions and we saw Skald off, that we've been having these strange dreams. Again, to reiterate, the implication here is that we are in the dream reality, constantly reliving our experience in the dream world every time we fall asleep. So we stand on a cliff, overlooking the castle at Enchanted Dominion, a world that wasn't playable in the original Kingdom Hearts Key. Overhead, a bird flies across the gap which we cannot pass, and we resolve to go home and figure out a way across tomorrow. The bird continues flying, and lands on the shoulder of its master, Maleficent. Now, versions of Disney villains exist within Kingdom Hearts Union Cross. Hologram versions of Jafar, the Queen of Hearts, and even right. Maleficent herself are fightable. However, this Maleficent is not, not even a Sora and his friends can she meddle in, fact in this seems world. very real. She states, It seems it went well. 
presumably talking about the process of entering the dream world. Even so, where is that fool gone now? Presumably talking about Pete. Oh well, Dream. not even Sora and his friends can meddle in this world. Dream drop distance. Nuisances can't get in. This and is very dr- clearly the Maleficent we have fought before in Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2. And based on the secret ending of Kingdom Hearts RA Coded, it seems that she has succeeded in her goal in finding a way into the dream world. The big question is then, how did she get here? And more mm. importantly, did she actually travel back in time to do it? And after months of what can very generously be described as filler story content, while series director Tetsuya Nomura had his main attention focused on finishing Kingdom Hearts 3, in October 2018, the Japanese version finally received an update to the main story. It seems that Maleficent has realized that because her heart was forcibly removed from her body by the possessed Riku in Kingdom Hearts 1, she can indeed cast her body behind and travel back in time as travel through Master Xehanort taught her to. She intended to return to a past version of her world and re-attempt to capture the seven princesses of heart. However, things did not go to plan. She thought she had returned to the true Enchanted Dominion. Aurora was still cursed by Maleficent and tricked into falling asleep. A curse was still put on the entire kingdom to make them sleep as well, and Prince Philip was still captured. However, instead of Terra, Ven, and Aqua having a hand in the story, this time our character does, yet the tale still ends the same way. Prince Philip's enchanted sword still finds its way into Maleficent's draconic heart and she is defeated. Injured, she limps back to the castle, lamenting that even though she returned to the past, she still couldn't change her fate. A mysterious being that simply refers to itself as the darkness stands sheltered in shadow and reveals to her that they couldn't allow that to happen. Okay, this is going to get pretty confusing. Here goes. In the real world, the Master of Masters used his Book of Prophecies to create the five illusionary worlds that we explore in Kingdom Hearts Key. But after the Keyblade War was waged, the Master and all the Foretellers disappeared. When the new Union leaders took all the Dandelions and sent them to the Dream World, there were no Foretellers or Master to maintain those illusionary worlds. In anticipation of this, data copies of these worlds were made. Controlled simulations, where the events played out exactly as they had the first time around, and could continue beyond where we got to in Kingdom Hearts Key. Versions of the Castle of Dreams and the Enchanted Dominion were made as well, even though the worlds weren't finished and visitable in Kingdom Hearts Key. So when Maleficent tried to travel back in time to the Enchanted Dominion that she came from, she mistakenly ended up in the Data One, trapped here by the darkness. They cannot allow her to return to the true past because of what she knows about the future. Perhaps if she were to change things, this would alter them from the course that the Master of Masters needs them to be in in order to enact this plan. Because of Maleficent's knowledge, Radiant Garden was intentionally left out of the recreation, the homeworld of Kairi. Perhaps the data recreations of the world's inhabitants are so accurate that should Maleficent have access to all seven princesses, even in the data world, she could really cause some havoc. Despite it seeming that Maleficent is trapped in the past, Darkness says that there is a way for her to return. So just who is this Darkness? People are already suspecting that it is Lushu, or the Master of Masters, an incarnation of Xehanort perhaps, or even Malusha. The way the being refers to itself is intentionally vague but it seems to imply that it is working with the Master of Masters, or at the very least is acting in accordance with the Master's insanely comprehensive knowledge of events. It truly seems like everything that has ever happened in the series is going exactly as he planned. However, there does seem to be some evidence that this darkness is the same being that struck down Streletzia. Ephema did state that the darkness in this world seems to have a mind of its own, Perhaps we didn't realize just how literal he was being. Personally, I feel like Dark Chirithi's involvement in this tale is not yet complete either. But speculation aside for now, that finally wraps up everything we know for sure about the story of Kingdom Hearts Key and its successes so far. The Japanese and global versions of the game receive story updates every month. So in mid-November, December, and January, I expect to receive three more important updates before Kingdom Hearts 3 is finally released. And I shall be making supplementary videos to this one as soon as they are out. If you made it this far, I want to thank you so much. The Let's re- mastermind of everything, personally. Recap where we left off. The Keyblade okay. War was beginning to ramp up in the real world. Wielders were fighting in the streets. I haven't and watched this one either. And even the Fortalizer began to openly clash. Master Ava gathered all her dandelions and trained mic, them though. on how to it's enter a dream reality where they would be safe from the destruction and carnage that the war would bring. She then disappeared to search for the Master of Masters fruitlessly, instead finding Master Lushu. Our character and Skald were searching for Ava, but instead found Master Gula, who told us some secrets from the Book of Prophecies. Stiletsia was also searching for us as she wanted to make sure I mean, we this is all in the mobile game, right? 
Her Chirithi ran to her and told her it had just seen us entering the storehouse. As Master Arva lashed out at Lushu, if it seems the like they're about to say the something that's the like, whoop, tower, I'll turn it signaling off. that the war had finally arrived. We left the storehouse, and was Skull tried one last time to convince us to come with her and all the other. If he can see everything, then there's no way it wasn't dream. intentional. We seemed convinced, but the Dark Chirithi stopped us, and instead we battled with it. Streletsia entered the house that we had just left, but found no one inside. As she turned to leave, she was struck down, and her rule book was stolen. Days later, we fought in the Keyblade War and would have perished had it not been for Skuld and Ephema, who took us into the dream with them. All the other dandelions that trained with Master Ava believed that we were ready for when the Keyblade War would finally arrive. Then the bells rang, and it just didn't. Our lives continued as normal. This is of course a lie. The memories of the dandelion's actual escape, and in our case, the war itself, have been overwritten by false memories of fun adventures with friends. Oh. We are still expected to collect Lux in this dream. However, we can no longer Make travel to the illusionary yeah. worlds we did before. We now travel to data replicas of those worlds, and it is in the data version of Enchanted Dominion that Maleficent finds herself trapped. Lorium has been searching for Streletsia, his younger sister. He <gasps> knows that she was supposed to have joined the Dandelions, but has been unable to find her since the war began and they all escaped. However, he has cleverly realized that each time the Dandelions enter a data world, they must first be converted to data themselves, much like Roxas was when he entered the data Twilight Town. So therefore, there should be a data backup of all the dandelions hidden within the archives. He discussed this idea with Ephema, which coincidentally gave Ephema a solution to a problem that he himself had been facing. The instructions left to the new Union leaders in their rulebooks stated that they were to run matches between Keyblade wielders, an idea that greatly bothered Ephema. What with the ugly clashing of wielders in the streets over Lux, not to mention the countless lives lost in the Keyblade War itself, it seemed rather uncouth to allow wielders to actually duel with each other. A few days later, Ephema called a meeting of the new Union leaders to discuss what to do. Brain seemed very inconvenienced by the whole thing, as he wished to get back to his reading. He let the group know that Lorien wouldn't be attending, but had left instructions that whatever the five voted on, his vote would align with Ephema's. Lorien was out searching for answers, and sought them from one of Streletsia's former party members, Elrena. You will likely recognize Arena as the human personification of Larxene, the 12th member of Organization 13. Lorium asked Arena what she knew about Streletsia, but due to Streletsia's very shy and solitary nature, the two never really spoke much, only discussing things as they pertained to their missions. It seems Lorium joined the Dandelions first, and had then been trying to convince Streletsia to join as well, but since then he hasn't seen her at all. Arena saw her infrequently, and whenever she did, it seems Streletsia was always waiting for someone. The last time Arena saw her was at that time that Master Ava gave the speech at the fountain, preparing the dandelions for their training. But again, because of the memory wipe, Arena believes nothing happened after that, that the war simply never took place. Lorien begins to suspect that if the last place Streletsia was seen was right before the war, then perhaps she ended up fighting in it after all. Arena is sorry that she can't be of any further help, but summons her Chirithi, as maybe it can. Elrena's Chirithi and Streletsia's were evidently good friends, which I suppose makes sense as they were both aligned with players in the same union and party. Lorium asks the last time it saw Streletsia's Chirithi, which was around the time that it and Streletsia were searching for some mystery person, someone she was desperate to invite into the Dandelions, even though she didn't know their name. This was right before the Clock Tower's bell rang. Elrena's and Streletsia's Chirithis were talking when they witnessed this mystery person and Skuld entering the storeroom. Upon seeing this, Streletsia's Chirithi ran back to her to let her know that it had found their target. Hearing that Skuld was involved, Lorium thanks Arena and her Chirithi and takes off, leaving Elrena to investigate the storeroom. Her Chirithi remarks that she doesn't usually care about other people, so it seems like searching for a missing person is very out of character for Arena. Back at the Union Leader's meeting, Ephemer has been hearing out his comrades' point of view. They all produce their rule books. But when Ephema brings up that the subject of the meeting is discussing the wielders fighting amongst each other, Ven seems very surprised to hear the news, almost like he hasn't actually read his book. He says he simply misunderstood, and the meeting continues. Brain seems indifferent to the idea, feeling that it is according to the rules they were instructed to follow, and hey, it might be a fun way to let off steam. Ven and Skald are strongly against it. Skald remembers all too well the grim reality of Keyblade wielders clashing in the streets. 
So with Brain for and Scald and Ven against, the decision lies with Ephema, who holds his and Lorian's votes, and shocks the room by agreeing to follow the rules, with a twist. Ephema remembers what Lorian had told him earlier, the data backups of every wielder should exist to allow travel to the data worlds, and Ephema will use those data backups as a stand-in so that the wielders will not physically be fighting each other, but would still satisfy the condition of holding matches between the wielders. The group agrees that this is a good solution, and Ephema thanks Lorian for giving him the idea, explaining good... to the group that he is looking for Streletsia. Not long after, Lorian returns, insisting to speak to Skald. He presumably questions her about her knowledge of Streletsia's whereabouts, which Skald unfortunately knows nothing about. Lorian is very concerned that Streletsia followed her mystery person right into the Keyblade War. Brain pipes up and tries to piece together some of the details. If Streletsia was looking for a mystery person right before the bell rang, then they couldn't have been a member of the Dandelions at that time, but Streletsia herself must have been. Brain finds it weird that Streletsia was so insistent on having a mystery person join the Dandelions, when according to Lorium, she was still unsure about the decision herself. All this talking has reminded Ephemer of someone. Someone very quiet, who didn't join the Dandelions. Skald realises as well, that Lorium is searching for us. Thank you again to Goldpanner and the team at Kingdom Hearts Insider for providing these translations within hours of the update coming out in Japan. At the current rate that the official translations are coming out, the global version will not see this batch of quests until May and June of 2019, something which I find utterly inexcusable. How they can continue to ignore their fans while leaving their community teams to take the fall for their horrendous decisions is completely beyond me. Also a huge shout out to Everglow for doing a similarly excellent job in providing translations. And if you have never watched his timeline series, you are missing out. It is perhaps the ultimate love letter to the Kingdom Hearts franchise and the most comprehensive way of catching up with the series before Kingdom Hearts 3 launches. This update raises several questions. I'm personally very curious as to the nature of the data worlds and have recently begun to wonder if in fact there can be multiple copies of a data world or perhaps they sort of permeate through time. What I'm saying is, if we are exploring a data Agrabah, Wonderland, Olympus Colosseum, etc. from the Dreaming Daybreak Town, is it possible that we are in fact exploring the same data worlds that Data Sora explores in Kingdom Hearts Coded? Also, Arena's very sweet and sincere personality is a little puzzling given what we know of Larxene. Lorium is also- Hey, how's it going? Ever heard about this game called League of Legends? Nope. Well, you're hearing about it now. Never Check heard of it. it. Each game no, I'd rather not. So shown to be a very caring older brother, a far cry from the cold and manipulative nobody he will one day be. Will something terrible happen to these two, causing them to become far more villainous? Arena's truthy does tease that Arena usually doesn't care about other people, which perhaps gives a clue to the far colder, and even at times sadistic nature of Larxene. Speaking of which, Arena has a truthy. Does that confirm her to be a full-fledged Keyblade wielder? I hypothesized in my last story video that perhaps Lorian was hiding the fact that he couldn't wield one from his fellow Union leaders, and to support that theory, we still haven't seen his Chirithi. Does he own one? And if so, would it not be any help in searching for Streletsia? I am very curious to see how the January update plays out. Give Lorium, Elrena, and Ven found themselves several years in the future? Will we learn about the Black Box, Lushu, and the Master of Masters? I actually don't think so. I feel like Kingdom Hearts 3 will actually be the one to ask a lot of questions that only Union Cross can answer. But we can speculate another time. I hope you would join me for further Union Cross updates. That, for um... That uh, didn't uh, that uh, didn't tell us much, except for reveal Larxene's human form. So at this rate, we don't know anything. So then, Angela, where did you pull your info from? So the mobile game has way more information than I thought it did. Like, way fucking more story than I thought it did. Like, you almost need... You almost need to play the mobile version, too, before you play Kingdom Hearts 3, it feels like. Which is kind of not cool, dude. Japanese version is out on Friday, so we'll find out on Friday. It's so grindy, though. Yeah, I mean, Demex and Luxord, Human Form... Yeah, we haven't seen them either. But that would also mean, if Larxene has a, a, a thing, that means that she's a Keyblade wielder. Does that mean they're all Keyblade wielders?
I wish they added it into the movie. Yeah, I don't know why there's so much. Maybe, maybe the third, maybe, maybe, I don't know, maybe Kingdom Hearts 3 will somehow wrap that up without needing to play the mobile game. But then again, Xemnas uh, technically is the body of Terra and whatnot. So wouldn't he also have the ability? So yeah, maybe there's something, maybe there's something to that. Sure you don't want to start da da da? No, I don't want to start da 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 today. There's a possibility, but Kingdom Hearts in general ask more questions than answer them. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, um, Dream Drop, Drop Distance, we'll start playing that on Saturday. Uh, hopefully be done by Monday morning. And then um, we'll start playing on, I think, yeah, I think so too. But still, still. Uh, thank you guys for hanging out. I appreciate it. All we did was, we didn't play any games today. We just, uh, we just watched everything. It was super cool. Super, super cool.